Okay, so what we're going to do is um, import static mesh into Unreal. Um, this used to be quite a complicated process, but it is it is really straightforward nowadays. Um, mainly because we're using the FBX file format for exporting. Um, this you may be familiar with this already because um, other engines use the same file format. Um, engines like Unity. Um, and whatnot. So if you're familiar with that, it's very, very easy for you to adopt this process as well. Um, so um, before we get started, it is important to make sure that your grid is right. You should be working um, before you even started modeling um, to the right grid. You shouldn't have to be resizing your grid. Um, you just want to make sure that the grid is the same setup as what you have in Unreal in this case. Um, I have done a video on um, on um, on making sure and setting up your grid to be correct so um, watch that if you're not sure. Um, so we've got our mesh here and um, we've made it but what we need to do is get this ready for export. It's not ready as it is. Um, we need to center it to the origin um, so that when we do export we don't get any um, weird kind of offset with pivot points and, and so on. That The pivot point which we see here is very important so um, if we make sure we export always from the origin for any props um, we shouldn't have any of those problems. The other thing is where our pivot point here is well it's in the middle of the object so it's not really where if we want this to kind of sit on the floor it's a bit fiddly to try and get it onto the floor so um, if you're familiar with um, making modular pieces then it's really important where you um, put the pivot point and it's the same with props um, generally you want the pivot point to be towards the bottom of the mesh um, if it was foliage or something like that you may want the pivot point to be just be slightly above the bottom so that um, you don't have any of the bottom of the mesh peeking out when you've got um, undulating kind of ground planes. But um, so we're just going to move this this pivot point around and just um, uh, just moving it. Just I'm just clicking on D here and just moving it with my. It looks like we're we're pretty much dead center anyway, so we're not bad actually. Uh, I'm just going to move that a bit above and then just hit D again. So now we've put it towards the bottom of the mesh um, and now I'm going to snap it to the origin so if I hold down X and just now I can't really see that so let's get a better position there just snap it to the origin there okay so we're pretty much ready to go um, we have got a load of gubbins here that we need to get rid of um, this is all your translation and information which sometimes you can have problems where I've not actually tried this in Unreal, but I've had this with other engines, um, where if you kept the translation information there, um, it will rescale or retranslate, use that information as you import the object into your into your scene, uh, which is what you don't want. So you want to reset all this um, so it doesn't have any kind of baggage with it, really. Um, so if I just freeze the transformations, modify freeze trans transformations there, um, and now we're ready to go, we've got a name for it, so um, let's export. Um, so it's just I will export selection, but if you're comfortable that there's nothing else in the scene, and there should be nothing else in the scene when, you, when you're doing this, you should be able to export everything. Um, and I've selected FBX already, there are other things here, so make sure that you've got FBX as your file type for exporting there. There's a couple of things you need to check before you um, actually do an export. The first thing, um, which you only need to do this once really, is make sure you're using the right FBX file format. So I've just gone into advanced options there, FBX file format, and um, and checked on that version. Um, whichever version of Unreal you're using, you may find that other versions of FBX are supported. Um, but at the time of doing this, it was 2014-15, so um, I've just made sure um, that I'm exporting that in case there were any problems with compatibility. So that's a good thing to check for. Um, once you've done that, the only other thing that is of major interest, 
I mean, there's a lot of settings here to look at. Animation doesn't really bother us. Cameras, we're not we don't care about, and lights and so on. Um, but under the geometry, um, we've got smooth smoothing groups. Um, if you don't tick this, then if you've been softening any edges um, in your mesh as you've been going along, um, so you've got a mixture of soft and hard edges, um, not having this ticked on will undo all of that good work. Basically everything will come through as a hard edge. So if you want to keep the smoothing groups, make sure um, that you, um, you've you got that ticked on. Okay, um, and choose the location I already have, so um, I'm just going to give it a name. Which is not the greatest name, but that will do. Um, and that's it, we've exported. So over to Unreal. Okay, so here we are in Unreal. We've just got a basic scene, just a few bits and bobs in it, but nothing special. We're not too fussed about that. Um, but if you've got a project going, it's important that you have um, some folders to put your meshes in and your materials and so on. So um, I've created a static mesh folder and a materials folder for the materials that I'll bring in. Um, so in my static mesh folder, um, in the content browser I'm just going to hit import and I'm going to go find my folder which I already have my folder here so um, here's my FBX file here and we'll open that and there's a load of settings here you can get it to auto, H auto generate collision um, which will get Unreal to create collision for you I haven't really talked about that but you can create your own collision in Maya as well um, and you can create collision after the fact so once you've actually imported it um, within the static mesh editor you can you can create collision there um, I personally prefer to create collision in Maya um, than, than Unreal but some of the Unreal stuff is quite good you can do quite a good simplified collision um, but I'm going to ignore that for now I'm just going to leave it uh, you can actually import materials as well I think you only you must have those materials in the same folder and it will try to link them up with the file name. Um, generally, I never switch this on. I usually control this and do this myself because it will try and drop it into my static mesh folder right here, so which I don't really want. Okay, so I'm going to just import that as we go. Give it a second. There we go. Uh, so we've got a mesh. There it is. And okay, there's no textures in it at the moment. So next thing is to import a texture and this is quite an old model so um, it's not PBR maybe I will convert this to PBR as one of my little jobs to do at some point um, be quite nice to see what it looks like but just so you get the idea I'm just going to import um, this old diffuse texture here so we've got um, this one I think this is the right one to make sure we've got a lot of textures in there so it's a bit confusing um, and then we've got our diffuse texture just popped in there um, we need a material for that so um, just creating basic material which I'll call M underscore and works and we just need to attach our texture to that and at the moment I'm just going to whack that into base colour as is apply and save And you would do a lot more than that. You would you would have an albedo here. You'd be plugging in a metallic speckler and roughness from a, probably a mask um, to set up that material. But just so we get something going, um, and I just need to attach that material to my static mesh. So uh, while I've got my static mesh open, I'm just clicking on that. I think I've got other options on here, but. Think it is here. There we go. Okay. Um, so drag and drop that in, and there we go. And there is a static mesh. In there, it's not lit that well, but obviously it's got just the basic lighting in there. Um, but there you go. That's how you um, import a static mesh. Okay. Cheers.